poll has Elizabeth Warren leading both Biden and Sanders. Who will drop out of the presidential race next and who might benefit from those dropouts? Team Rising is here to tackle these topics. Jonathan Harris is a political commentator and Holly Turner, a Republican strategist, previously spent a year working as assistant administrator at the U.S. Small Business Administration. Lots of administrators. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Love welcome our administrators on both. the show. <laughs> okay, very interesting, uh, very interesting new Iowa poll. Everybody is talking about it. Elizabeth Warren at 22% in the Des Moines Register poll, 20% at Joe Biden. First time that she's overtaken him in that state. Everybody is saying, basically, Iowa is the biggest slingshot in the world, is what everybody talks about here on this show. And it's one of those things that can really bring you momentum, could put her on the track to the nomination. Jonathan, why do you think that Elizabeth Warren is surging at this particular moment? I'm not even sure mm. if it's so much of Elizabeth Warren's a terrible thing to say, but I'm not sure yeah. if it's so much of her surging or if it's just Biden, Biden kind of weakening, mm. which is what I'm, I'm a little concerned about because obviously my money's always on Biden, yeah. uh, at least for now. Mm. Um, I don't know that she's necessarily done anything that anyone could point to, but I think Biden has had a series yeah. of, of issues recently that might be hurting him in that mm. poll. He still leads nationally, but that might be hurting I'm him there. I'm generally comfortable saying she's surging because what I'm seeing is this huge drop with Kamala Harris at 6% that we saw in that poll. Right. And a lot of that is being uh, taken up by Elizabeth Warren. That's a lot of what Crystal and I have looked at in the second choice candidates, which is that the second choice for a lot of a Kamala Harris voters is Elizabeth Warren. It makes sense. A lot of upper middle class white liberals. But the real thing is, Holly, is like that's not really the base yeah. that you need to win or be popular of in order to beat Trump, right? Right. right. Yeah. So it's great in Iowa to be Elizabeth right. Warren. Lots of white sure. people in Iowa. Crystal, you've brought that yeah. up before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's true. White people are but she, yeah. she has... Real. She has terrible numbers with right. minority communities as, as far as their levels They've of support. They've gone up a little bit recently. I was going to say they, I want to say they, they have. have. Recently some, they have gone up. But, yeah. not, but not significantly, not, not, not enough to make a difference. And so why does that matter? Well, obviously she has to win states like South Carolina and some of the southern states to get the nomination. But then when you get to the general election, that's a big part of winning is you have to motivate. Right. You have to give some. You have to be excitable, mm -hmm. exciting to to all of your uh, yeah. groups. Yeah. And, and she's she. Uh, what's turned out going to be? And I Trump's mean, support is actually doing pretty well yeah. with men in right. African American and Hispanic communities. So what is she going to do to really drive turnout? Pretty well being a relative term, but I mean I actually this is what I, I did my say, this yeah, is what I did my monologue on today is I I'm very nervous that she would lose to Donald Trump for for much of what you're saying, Holly, which is that. Democrats have two paths to beating Trump. One is to excite the base, young voters of color, working class voters of color in particular, that's her weakest demographic, or to flip the sort of Obama Trump voters. Those people aren't are not going to go to war. Are not going to yeah. war either. So, I mean, that's what has me concerned is I think there is a good chance she could win Iowa and New Hampshire. And if you win both of those states, you have tons of momentum in terms mm -hmm. of the Democratic primary. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's even kind of what you, I was saying that I feel like it's maybe some of the more recent news, like concerning Biden. Mm -hmm. it, even you're saying it's something maybe that's from Kamala Harris weakening. Yes. I don't, I don't see it so much as her. I think it's just sort of her benefiting yeah. from other candidates maybe falling off. Falling right. off. I don't yeah. think it's anything that she herself what is do doing. What do you think so has think hurt Biden though? I think just a lot of the just the news recently that that's come out. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it's the gaffes. I don't think it's the gaffes. I think it's just a lot of the news that's that's been coming out recently, and also too, I think maybe just. He's a little quiet, which I think has been good, but I don't think you, we're clear necessarily on what his message is. I yeah. don't think we're 100% clear on exactly what he's trying to give voters. Mm -hmm. I think he's more just been kind of dodging attacks and debates and in the news, right. and the dodging is not necessarily translating into what exactly is your message. I think his electability has taken a bit of a hit to Holly as he doesn't perform. You know, he's on the stage with everybody. He does okay, right? Mm -hmm. But right. is that what it's going to be to be able to beat Trump when he has trouble sometimes articulating what his ideas are in a sort of coherent right. fashion when he gets confused about things. I think over time that adds up and people go, mm, maybe he's not the perfect person to be able to take I, that job. You're spot on. And, and I've said this before, He's he is the Democrats' Jeb Bush, yeah, right? And I, and I think there was a sense of entitlement a little bit when he joined the race that yeah. he felt like it was owed to him a little Agreed. bit, just like Bush had with mm -hmm. ours. And I think the voters resent that a lot. I think they do too. I think he should put an exclamation point behind his name and see yeah. how that works out. <laughs> it might happen. <help. laughs> It would be a contrast with the energy that he brings. <laughs> I, don't think it's, but, I don't think it's an entitlement. Yeah. I would just say yeah. that it's, he's probably the most prominent name 
I think, on no, the field. I, I don't think it's necessarily. You're, you're as definitely much of a right title there. But we, should, we also I want to talk about here about who's going to drop out next because all eyes are on Cory Booker right now. <laughs> Apparently, he has to raise two million dollars in the next ten days, or his campaign has quote no legitimate yeah. long term. This was according path to a memo from his, own from his own campaign, campaign which he essentially he confirmed not, on yeah. on Twitter. He says it's an unusual move for us to be this transparent. But there can be no courage about vulnerability. I want people to see where we are and understand we have a pathway to victory, but I can't walk it alone. I don't think He's so. He's not in good position here. I mean, I, I'm surprised that that he would be that kind of forthcoming. Also, mm -hmm. I mean, he's polling at, what, 3%? Yes, I think going in Iowa, about 3% nationally. Also, I think real clear politics out of yeah. like 3%. So, I mean, it's... It's not surprising. It's not catching on. From the very right. beginning, yeah. his campaign has been a bit of a dud. And right. I, I don't really, no, again, why is Cory Booker running? Like, actually, <laughs> but let's boil it down. Yeah. Uh, why, do you think he knows why he's running, Holly? I don't think so. No, I mean, yeah. I think there was a moment when, yeah. you know, when he was fresh on the scene right. where he just had so much energy, so much authenticity. And I, and I think he saw himself as being a president of the United States. Yeah. But I think so much time has passed and he's been in the system, he's yeah. been in the swamp, and he's just not that same person that he was back you then. Read too many headlines it, comparing him to Obama. It yeah. was like, I looked at True. him then and I said, forget yeah. about it. It's, it's interesting, though, because he's one who, you know, everybody in Iowa keeps yeah. telling he's got oh, a great yeah. ground game in Ohio, in, in Iowa, rather. Like, he's built out his team. He's yeah. got the right people in place. He had plenty of money. In all the debates, like, he gets a lot of time to make his case. Mm -hmm. He's always one of the top in terms of the number of minutes spoken on the debate stage. And it's just not yeah. resonating. But he's not on the sheet in front of me. I think he's on the aisle. Yeah. I think he might be one of those victims of yeah. the crowded field. I yeah, think he I might think so be too. one of those victims mm -hmm. of fact that it's ballooned to, to roughly 20 people running. Because, I mean, I think that some of the, the demographics you were talking about that the Democrats need to win, he could lock down African-American voters, young voters. Mm -hmm. He's He's got a younger appeal. But I just think there's so many people there. And you know kind of Andrew Yang's message. You know Buttigieg. And I think his but message you know, has just gotten kind of... younger voters want specifics. Right. Yeah. And they right. want radical and not, and not, not radical love, which was right. his... I was he's say, got he's a radical... Got radical. Yeah, he's got <laughs> love, not, yeah. the, uh, yeah. not the change He's, a, he's like yeah. radical light, which yeah. maybe is not... <laughs> radical uh, light. Yeah, yeah. Is not necessarily what they're doing. Doesn't really work. Right All right, now. stick with us, guys. We're going to be right back with more Team Rising after this.